Hey guys, Jen here. I know that I was supposed to do this as a live stream. Unfortunately, I've been feeling very under the weather today, and so I decided rather than try to be live, I'm just going to shoot a quick video so that you have the third part of the series and the training series, but that I don't have to actually go live. So, um, for those of you who are new to me, welcome. I'm Jennifer Blanchard. I'm an author and a book and mindset coach, and I work with writers who are multi-passionate, who want to create their dream writing lives, their dream creative lives, and do it all on their terms. And a big part of, you know, having your dream creative life is allowing yourself to express yourself in whatever way makes sense for you. And of course, um, you know, doing the things that are of interest to you. So for this three-part series. We've been talking about nonfiction ebooks and how to write them. Our first training video from the other day was all about the difference between a novel, a memoir, and a nonfiction book because there are big differences and they matter. Um, our training yesterday was on how to find a badass idea for your nonfiction book, so if you haven't checked that one out, especially you're going to want to check that one out before you watch today's training. And today we're going to talk about how to outline your nonfiction ebook so that you can write it. So, um, like I said, if you haven't checked out the previous videos, be sure to do that on my Facebook page by going to the videos tab and you'll see all the old replays from my live streams. Be sure to especially check out the second one on finding a badass idea because without a badass idea, you really can't outline anything. So that is the first step, of course, is having a badass idea. So go through that training first, find your idea, decide, or even if you're deciding on a couple, you can use this outlining process on both of the ideas or the ideas you have and then decide from there which one of these is going to be the best one for you. All right, so let's say you've got your idea already and just as an example, I'm going to make something up that we're going to use for this exercises. So um, my idea I'm going to use is challenge yourself. So I'm writing an ebook right now on how to challenge yourself and really creating personal challenges as a way of creating new habits, um, getting rid of old habits, basically just any areas of your life where you want to make improvements using a personal challenge to get yourself to make it happen. So um, that's what this book is going to be about. So if I was going to outline this, and I've already done this whole process on this book, but just as a starting point, as an example, um, we're going to go through the process and I'm going to just walk you through all the steps. And because this is not a live stream, I'm not going to do the timer this time, but you can actually just pause the video, do the exercise, and then hit play again and watch the rest. And so you can go through all of the steps in the process and you don't have to, you know, worry about doing it live. So get yourself your notebook or a journal of some kind, a timer if you have one on your phone or, you know, kitchen timer, whatever you have. Um, it helps to have a timer so that you give yourself a deadline to say, okay, I'm going to brainstorm this one for 10 minutes or I'm going to work on this for five minutes. Whatever, you know, feels good to you. It helps to have that start, you know, start and stop point. So the first step in the outlining process is doing a brain dump. Now, this is basically when you take your idea. So in my case, personal challenges, how to challenge yourself to create change. Um, and actually do a brain dump of everything you can think of that would go into this book. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to use everything, but this is one of those times where you're just writing everything you can think of, everything that's in your head, just getting it all down on paper. Because until you have it on paper, you're not going to have a clear picture of what do you even have to work with. Is there even enough? Do you need to come up with more? So, um, so first step is to do a brain dump. I would, like I said, set a timer for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and just write down whatever ideas come to you. So when I think about personal challenges, I think about things like, first of all, sharing my own stories of how I've used challenges to create change in my life. Um, so that would be something I would write down. Some other things I would think about covering, well, I would definitely want to talk about um, how to create a challenge what they actually are, how to use them, how to actually stick with it, um, the different steps of creating a challenge, what's all involved in it, um, troubleshooting if you find yourself getting stuck along the way. So just all of these things I would write down in this brain dump of, you know, okay, this is what I'm going to put in this book. So do that right now. Pause this video and do a brain dump of your idea. Write down everything you can think of that you would want to cover in this book. Um, no censoring yourself, no judgment. So this is one of those times where you're not allowed to criticize. You're only writing stuff down. Once you write it down, then you can judge, then you can criticize. But right now, just write it down because you just never know what comes through when you do a brain dump that may actually be super valuable and really useful for your book. So no censoring, no judgment. Pause the video now go do this exercise and then come right back. All right, so now we are on step two of the outlining process. So you've just done your brain dump. You have everything listed out that you could potentially put in this book. 
Awesome. Now you're going to go back through your brain dump and you're going to look for common topics or common themes or common ideas, just things that relate to each other. So for example, in my, you know, example that I'm talking about. So if I list out all the ways that, you know, you could come up with a personal challenge. So I'm giving you all the steps. Okay. Well, I'm going to circle all of those steps and I'm actually going to build them into a process. Step one, step two, step three, step four of how to create a personal challenge. So those are the ones I would circle and say, this relates to creating a process. So I'm going to circle that and say process. So then I know when I go back to my notes, like, oh, okay, I have a chapter on the process for actually creating a personal challenge. And then, oh, I'm going to have a chapter on, you know, these other ideas that go together. So go back through your brain dump look for common ideas or common topics that relate to each other that could potentially go together either in a chapter or maybe multiple sections across the book. You know, you get to decide, but just looking at what you have and then finding the common topics and themes. Of course, you may also come up with some additional ideas as you do this. So if you do write them down as well, categorize them. So figure out where they would go, you know, which ideas or topics they would go with. Um, And then from there, we will move on to actually creating the outline for your book. So pause this video right now, go and my dog, I swear my dog just every time I do a video, whether it's live video, whether it's not a live video, he always finds a way to get himself in there somehow. So if you can't hear him in the background, um, if you can, there you go, my dog. Um, okay. So pause the video. Like I said, come back here in a few minutes after you've gone through your brain dump and circled the topics and things that relate to each other. And I'm going to wait for you to do that. All right, so welcome back to this video. Hopefully now you've got a really good idea of what to include in your book and of course categorizing or putting all the topics together so that it makes it easier for you to now do step three, which is creating the outline that you're actually going to use to write your book. So an outline is basically just a, well, actually I like to do what I call a table of contents outline. A table of contents outline is basically pretending that you're writing the table of contents for your nonfiction book and you're going to structure the outline based on what you would do for the TOC. So in a TOC, you usually start with, okay, well, there's an introduction and then you start at the very beginning. You know, what's the first part? What has to be told to us before the rest will make sense? Okay, that goes first. What goes second? Well, okay, you know, you're going to give your own personal experience behind it, what you've actually been through, sharing your stories. Cool. Then the next part, you're going to start talking about the process and the steps. And then in the next part, maybe you'll break down each of the steps into separate sections. Okay, cool. So just go back through your brain dump outline that you've now circled everything on and actually transfer it into a table of contents outline. So order it how you would if it was actually the table of contents of your book. So that's the first thing you want to do with that. And then we'll talk about how to actually go back through it and make sure you've got everything that you need. So pause this video again, go back and create your table of contents outline, and I'll see you in a minute. All right, cool. So hopefully you're pausing along the way and actually doing the exercises. If you're not, that's fine too, I guess, but I would highly recommend going back through this and making sure that you do all the steps in the process because having an outline to write from makes it a million times easier to get a first draft done and quickly. So when I see writers or entrepreneurs struggling with getting their books written, I know nine times out of 10, it's because they haven't done enough planning and development ahead of time. And if they had, they wouldn't be struggling because when you have an outline, it's like having a writing prompt every single time you sit down. So you literally are just, what do I have to write today? Oh, I'm writing about this. And then you just sit down and you do it really simple. But when you don't have that, when you basically sit down and you're like, what am I writing today? And you're just staring down a blank page. Well, that makes it a lot harder to actually do the writing and to force yourself to sit there and and get the words out because you have no idea what you're writing. It's like, oh, what am I going to write now? What section comes next? I don't know because I didn't think about it. So don't do that to yourself. It's just a way of making it harder. Make it easy on yourself. Do this process step by step. Go through this video and do the process. And then when you sit down and write your first draft, it's going to be a million times better and it's going to go a whole lot faster. And if you like going fast, stay, uh, stay tuned for the end of the video when I'm going to tell you about how you can get your ebook written and published very fast. Okay, so step four in the process, this is the final step before you actually start writing, is now you're going to go back through your table of contents outline and you're going to review everything and you're going to look for places where you missed something, where additional information is needed, where something might be repetitive, where you feel like you might have to cover something more in detail. Maybe there's some research that needs to be done. So you're going to go back through this outline now and you're going to mark those areas of, okay, 
Is there anything else I need to add to this outline? Are there places I know I'm going to have to do research? Mark that so you know. And just go back through it. Finalizing and really looking for everything that you've got and whether you need additional things, whether you have too much. So I've actually seen where sometimes I'll outline a book and then I'm like, oh, this could actually be two books. Like there's so much here. And I am a fan of shorter books because I just, I just believe that a shorter book is actually better because a reader will get through it and then they'll actually implement because they got through the book fast enough where it's still exciting and, and something that they're interested in. Whereas if you read a 400 page book, by the time you're done, you're not motivated to go back through it and do the exercises because it just took too long. So short and sweet, I prefer, which is why I write short and sweet books. And I would recommend you do the same, just really focusing on one result per book and making it easier on your reader to actually get through the content and then implement in their own lives because the whole point is transformation. The whole point is for them to actually do something with their life that they want to change, whether it's you know something they're changing or a habit they're building. Whatever it is your book is about, you want to give your reader everything that they need. So go back through, do you have everything? Is there anything else that needs to be there? Is there anything you need to take out? Look at the whole thing, finalize your outline. Now, once you've done that, like I said, you're ready to start writing. So you're just going to take your outline, you're going to sit down, and you're going to start writing. Just look at which section you prefer to start with. You don't have to start at the beginning, so not everybody does. Sometimes, you know, it's easier to start at the beginning and write through, but you don't have to. So what I like to do is I use a program called Scrivener. It's a writing software that's made for fiction writers, novelists, um, you know, people who write nonfiction, etc. And I think also screenplays, um, although I actually use a different software for screenplays. Side note. Um, but Scrivener is great. So what I do with Scrivener is I start with a nonfiction book template. That's one of the options that you get to choose. And then I'll actually set up a separate uh, document for each section of the nonfiction book that I'm writing. So then I can jump around. I don't have to write start to finish. I'm not writing in a Word document. So if you write in a Word document, the problem is that you're going to have that scrolling thing. I'll have to scroll up to figure out what I did yesterday. I have to scroll around to find which section I'm in. Whereas if you use Scrivener, everything is mapped out for you by section. So it's literally just, oh, okay, I'm going to write about this today. Or if you don't feel like writing that section, you can skip to another one because you've got them sectioned out where each one is its own document. And then when you're all done, you just collect them all together and Scrivener has an output feature where you actually, all that stuff gets put into one document and then you can export it as a Word document. So then you'll have it all in one you know, document, but you didn't have to write it that way. So it's up to you how you write it, of course, um, but I would highly recommend checking out Scrivener for the fact that you can write it in separate sections. Another option, if you don't want to spend any money, is you could take separate Word documents and write each section or each chapter in a separate document. Then at the end, just copy and paste everything into one document. That is what I used to do when Scrivener did not exist yet. So um, that's another possibility as well. So I hope this series has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments because I'm happy to answer them for you. Um, I just want you to have exactly what you need to take all the knowledge and the skills and the experiences that you have and put them into something that could be valuable for a reader and, of course, valuable for your own writing career. Because when you diversify, when you don't tell yourself that you have to only write one type of thing or only write about one topic, you give yourself the freedom to create the writing life you actually dream of having. And when you're multi-passionate, it's just necessary. You have to give yourself permission to write about the things that interest you, that you actually want to write about, and don't stick yourself in, well, I have to do this because that's what I've always done. That was something I struggled with for a long time because I have been writing writing books for almost a decade now. So it's been a long time and it's hard to think, oh, I'm going to branch out and write something else. So my book about personal challenges has nothing to do with writing. Now, of course, there were some challenges that I did related to my writing and I will talk about that. But overall, it's not a book just for writers. It's a book for people who want to make change in their life and have transformations in their life by doing something fun. So I think that personal challenges are really fun. For me, it's a less um, just stressful way of making a change where I, if I'm challenging myself or if I'm having fun, then it doesn't feel like work and it doesn't feel like I'm having to you know, struggle with it. It's just, oh, I'm, I'm trying this out. It's an experiment. It's just 30 days or whatever. So, But it's a topic that's completely different than anything I've ever written about before. So for me, it was a thing that I had to just get myself to that place where I felt like, okay, I'm allowed to write about whatever I feel like writing about, and whatever I feel like I know this stuff, I know that people would be used uh, or would find it useful, and that's what I want to put out there. So 
Don't give yourself a hard time if you find yourself wanting to write about multiple topics. That's totally cool. Don't write about all of them in one book, of course. Um, but you could use this same process. So start with video two on how to find your badass idea and then come back to this video and how to outline your book and you could basically use these two videos over and over and over again for every book you write nonfiction book not necessarily novels novels are completely different than this so be sure to watch video one if you're not clear on that yet um, but overall you could watch video two and three and you could write every nonfiction book you've ever dreamed of writing from here until the end of your freaking life so Hopefully this helps you. Let me know if you have questions. And if you are ready to get your nonfiction ebook written and published right now, as in in the next 30 days, then be sure to check out my upcoming workshop, Write and Publish Your Nonfiction Ebook in 10 Days. I know 10 days seems crazy, but it totally works. We are not just doing the workshop for 10 days this time. We actually have a pre-work week where we're spending a whole week outlining, figuring out the, the book that we're going to write, developing it, doing any research that needs to be done so that when the 10 days officially starts, you've got all that stuff ready to go. And all you have to do is focus on writing, revising, getting it published, and you're done. And within the next 15, 20, 30 days, you could have your very first or your next nonfiction book out on Amazon. So be sure to check out all the testimonials from students who went through this workshop the previous three times that I ran it and completed their books, published them on Amazon, and are now working on their next ones. You can go to jenniferblanchard.net slash 10 days to check out all the details of the workshop, testimonials from previous students, and of course, to sign up. I will catch you guys next time. Thanks for joining me for this series.